Hi everybody. So last time we were talking about different flow variables. And so this time we're going to be moving on and seeing how those flow variables lead to um, aerodynamic forces and moments. So let's get right to it. So an object in a force, and sorry, object in a flow will always experience a force. Now, it doesn't matter how complicated it, our object is. Now, here's this nice little air foil, and here is my flow going over it. I'm make, trying to use some different colors here just to make it a little bit more interesting to look at. I have the ability, why not use it? And that's going to lead to a force. There we are. So, no matter how complex that object, It will only ever have two primary forces. Those are going to be pressure. and shear stress. If you're like, wait a second, those aren't forces. Yes, yes, technically they're pressures, but they lead to forces. So pressure right here and shear stress on the other side, which is going to be connected to our viscosity and the gradient of velocity. Okay, if I look at that for my object, so here is my object. Let's just box these guys in. Perfect. And I have an object right here. Same object in both cases. And what is it going to do? What do these two types of forces do? Well, in one case, it's going to try to deform or move the object. So we'll either try to stretch that object, or it will try to move the object to one side or the other. In the other case, we can also have it deform. It might cause it to um, change its shape, but in this case, it's more because it's twisting. It also might cause rotation. So one of these is normal, as you can see, and the other is tangential. Other is tangential. Now, complex surfaces lead to very complex distributions. which is why we're different than fluid mechanics, where we typically have very simple shapes. And those simple shapes lead to exact solutions. That's why we have to use approximations a lot of times, or we're using um, numerical methods to solve things. So here's like my pressure distribution. I'm gonna just draw it first, and it goes down there, and down a little bit on the bottom. There you go, something like this. And the red right here is going to be my pressure distribution. And if I were to do on the surface, what I would probably see is I would see, you know, longer arrows showing more, shorter arrows showing less, and the blue would be my shear distribution. And those are going to lead us to force, um, different body forces like lift and drag. And just as a note, the pressure is a function of position. 
the distance along my airfoil, as is the shear stress. Nice, I'm liking this. Okay, now what do I mean when I say right here position? Well, it's slightly different than X and Y. So here, let me go ahead and draw it for you. So here's two objects. I'm not gonna bother to fill them in. Actually, I'll fill them in. Okay. And S is going along the surface of the object. While X and Y would say like, well, I have a centroid somewhere on the object possibly, and then I would have to go a certain number of steps to get to that surface. The reason we want to go away from X and Y typically is because we don't really care about what's happening inside of the object. You're like, I don't care about the inside. Surface is most important. And since in arrow, we have lots of complex surfaces. That means we always want to have focus on um, our position as a function of following the surface rather than as x and y coordinates. Now, as a note, we do eventually care about the inside, but that's later on, okay? For now, we're only focusing on the surface because that's what's leading to lift and drag. When we add together our pressure and our shear force, shear stress, that's what's leading to the net force. Okay, so I guess we'll stop this time. See you in a bit.